And so joining me now, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, who you don't have much to do here. We no. Can just chill out and relax. It's a slow time here. Okay, first of all, preparing for a go potential government shutdown, um, what's the plan and what about public health in, let in lieu of if the possibility if that happens? Well, obviously we want to avoid a shutdown and right. we're doing everything to avoid a shutdown. The good news is that a lot of public health work, most public health work will be exempt if okay. there is a shutdown, but there's no question. It's not helpful to fight a pandemic or to address all the challenges we have in the country if the government shuts down. So. so Okay, so we're going to be move, inching toward that, and the Republicans are kind of lumping that on Democrats. Um, they are. Now, let's just, it's, this is crazy what's happening right now, because the House has passed a continuing resolution that would keep the government open. Mm -hmm. Everyone can be secured, the government stays open, all their services. That included raising the debt limit. Mm -hmm. The Senate could pass that tomorrow. Senate Republicans are saying we could never get we could we should raise the debt limit where it would be bad for our economy it'd be devastating for our economy yet they still do not want to raise the debt limit they want to play games with our economy with the full faith and credit of the United States they could vote on that today meanwhile there's a lot of talk about the infrastructure package reconciliation and uh, the bottom line is it comes down to the amount of money being spent and what's going to have to go. So my big question to you is what's not going to see the light of day in, in the end here in order to get something passed? Because obviously the American people are waiting for bridges and roads yeah. and for things to be improved in this country. And there's a lot of Democrats who really feel it's important to work on human infrastructure mm -hmm. to make it so that women don't have to, you know, I mean, you just came right running from literally what we're talking yes. about, uh, care issues, yes. um, is child care and is, is you know, um, family leave, all the, are those things going to see the light of day? Well, they're, they're in the light of day right now. It but is true. Are they going to stay in the light of day? It is true that right now, the next couple of days are going to be a pivotal period of compromise and discussion. The mm -hmm. president will have his sleeves rolled up. He'll be calling people. He'll be meeting with people. But what is central to this package and what is very important to the president is lowering costs for the American people. As you referenced, mm -hmm. child care, elder care. So many people like right. myself, you're in the in-between sandwich generation. Yep. Uh, lowering the cost for college, for universal pre-K. Those are all pieces that are important to the president, uh, as are rebuilding our roads, rails, and bridges in these two packages. He also knows there has to be compromise, there has to be negotiation. The good news is that most Democrats agree we have to lower all those costs. Child mm -hmm. care, uh, college, preschool, that's important to people across the country, regardless of your political affiliation. Uh, the question is really the size, as you said, and that's what they're talking about now. So something, something is going to have to go. Um, and progressives and moderates are going to have to somehow come together. What is it about a President Biden uh, that you think will be able to make that happen? Is he going to be able to get those two sides to come together and agree to move forward? He's certainly going to work his heart out What's at he gonna doing do? that. Well, just two days ago, he had a group of moderates, a group of progressives, uh, a leadership down here at the White House. Yesterday, there was a lot of behind the scenes sausage making work that was happening uh, to continue to make progress. And we evaluate day by day what he needs to do, how he needs to get engaged, who he needs to call, who he needs to invite here in order to make progress. So the next couple days are going to be important, uh, but we also know we're in the middle of a process. What I will say about him is he's an excellent listener. Mm -hmm. He's also someone who believes in compromise, believes in bringing sides together and unifying people. That's how he ran, and he's working to do that with this package. Any plans today to meet with anybody to move any of this forward? We will see. I know this sounds crazy, but we may decide in an hour or two that that's an important thing to do and bring people down here. Or maybe we'll meet with people at a staff level. Or maybe mm -hmm. people will go to the Hill. We make decisions hour by hour on how to move things forward. Okay. I still want to know if paid leave is going to see the light of day. I'm not getting a complete yes. Well, here's but... what's important. It does. It's not necessarily true that something has to drop out. All of these pieces are in the package. They're in the package because the president felt they were vitally important to women, to families, mm -hmm. to 
from lowering costs for people across the country to being more competitive over the long term. Now we have to figure out how we can get agreement to get enough votes to get the package across the finish line. Let's talk about booster shots, um, because it seems like what came out yesterday was a kind of a, a wide array of potential for people to get them. There are a lot of booster shots available, mm -hmm. um, and yet they're not going to be completely available to the American public. Do you think that will happen at some point? This is a process. This is yeah. a really important question yeah. because the FDA and the CDC, there's a lot of lead up to this week because it was the first time that booster shots in some capacity would be approved. But it's really a step in the process. Mm -hmm. They're not closing up shop. They're looking at data today. They're looking at Moderna data that has already been submitted for approval for boosters. They're looking at uh, more data for people under the age of 65. Mm -hmm. uh, and also what's important to note about what was announced last night is that people who are in industries like healthcare workers, doctors, I know you all have a lot of them on the show, they're really at the brink here. They're yeah. at the end of the, they're at the edge. Yeah. And uh, we wanna make sure they know they can take the booster to get protected as well. Or I should say the CDC director wants to make sure they know that. Absolutely. So that's an important piece, but it's ongoing. There's going to be more that's coming as they look at more data. All right. Joe's got a question for you, Joe. Hi, Joe. Got it. Hey there. How are you, and Jen? A couple quick Great. questions. One, I'm uh, going to bounce around here. Let's start with the southern border. Obviously, problem right now with Haitian refugees down there and trying to figure out how to sort through that humanitarian crisis. But there's been an ongoing humanitarian crisis down there for some time. Um, what, what can the Biden administration do uh, to have a more sort of global approach to this where uh, where we can we can get a fix on the southern border? We, we can be assured that two, three, four months from now, we aren't going yeah. to continue to be enduring this humanitarian crisis. Yeah. First, you're absolutely right, Joe. This needs a longer term fix. And that's why the president proposed an immigration bill his first day in office. Now, we've seen that parts of it were proposed in the reconciliation package that's moving its way through. The parliamentarian considered a piece. Members of the Senate are going to come back with another proposal. But fundamentally, what we need to do here is we need to pass a new immigration law. We need to fix the system over the long term. We've seen a lot of speeches out there uh, by Republicans, by others who are talking about what's happening at the border, being critical. What we haven't seen is a plan proposed. And that's what we really need to do to address this over the long term, uh, even as we're addressing the current situation in Del Rio and at the border as we speak. Um, I, so l let me ask you about uh, something that the White House put out over the past couple of days, a report that the richest families, the richest households in America, uh, the, the billionaires uh, are, are paying about 8% uh, in income taxes, obviously a lot yeah. less of a percentage than their clerical workers are, are, are paying, probably the people who uh, take care of their grounds and clean up their homes. Um, the, the, for some reason, the House Democratic tax plan doesn't touch that capital. Uh, it, it, it goes after instead uh, income earners. Um, does, the, does the Biden administration want to see the richest Americans, uh, want to see the multinational corporations like Nike and Amazon, who regularly pay zero percent in taxes, yeah. uh, actually get taxed at fair rates? And how are you going to do it? We do. Uh, one of the fundamentals of the, what the president has proposed is, of course, making child care, uh, college, universal pre-K available for people, but it's also about making the tax system more fair. And that's not just a pay for. That's not just something that's going to pay for his proposals. That's something we should be doing. And as you noted, you know, some of the top companies in the world, about 50 of the top companies, paid zero in taxes. That's outrageous. And as you said, uh, according to this report, people who are some of the highest income earners are paying a rate that is much lower than nurses, people who are on the front lines of fighting the pandemic, teachers, people who are teaching my kids and kids across the country. That is crazy. And it is something we want to address. That's what we're working through and discussing now. But the president's going to keep fighting for tax fairness beyond. This is a central central priority for him. What, what, what makes it what makes it so hard to, to make sure that uh, people that, are, that make tens of billions of dollars, the, the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world, the Bill Gates of the world, yeah. uh, are, are, what makes it so hard for, to get them to pay at least 20, 25 percent of their income in taxes? Uh, why, why is capital taxed at such a lower rate 
uh, than income? And how high of a priority is it for the president to actually finally have, you know, for us to finally have a president do something about it? It's a huge priority for him. And why is it so hard, Joe? Politics. I mean, it's hard because of politics, which is crazy, because how can we how could anyone, regardless of your party, be advocating for someone who's a millionaire or billionaire to pay a lower rate than a nurse or a teacher? Uh, but there are you know, there are a lot of people in the Republican Party uh, and there are there are even some in the Democratic Party who are worried that this is bad politics. I have news for you. It is not. It is good politics. It's also what's morally right. We should make our tax system more fair, but we're going to have to keep fighting this fight to get things across the finish line. Okay, so back here uh, at the White House, I'm just curious what the administration's thoughts are and what Joe Biden's thoughts are moving forward. We've had a lot of conversations about Facebook. Joe just brought up Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. The Wall Street Journal just came out with a pretty scathing report showing that even the company's internal studies showed that one of their platforms, Instagram, was really devastatingly uh, detrimental to young girls. Is there any you know, plan in the future to address these issues with these big tech companies, specifically Facebook, which has no, reg you know, no re there's no place for it yeah. in terms of regulation or you know, hold it accountable as a publisher or hold it accountable as something that creates a product. It appears that this just keeps going down the line. It shouldn't. Uh, and, the, and the president thinks that a lot of these platforms have too much power. Uh, a lot of these platforms could do certainly much more uh, to address uh, all of the issues you've referenced. I mean, as a mother of a young girl, it makes me absolutely outraged that you see uh, that Instagram, that there are these reports about Instagram yeah. affecting girls' mental health. That is outrageous. All of um, them have accounts. They lie in bed with looking at, the, uh, scrolling through and seeing what they're not. And it's, I mean, the impact I think is going to be, this is going to be like big tobacco at some point. And, and, and I would also say that as we're in the middle of a pandemic, we know that they have more data about how misinformation exactly. is traveling on the internet. And we know that people are getting misinformation on the internet that is preventing them or prompting them not to get a vaccine. Will there be action on this? We'll have to see. There has to be appetite in Congress. Uh, there has to be a desire to get things uh, done and changed. But certainly elevating these issues, as a number of reporters have, as you have, as we try to do, is also important. All right, Willie. Hey, Jen, good morning. It's Willie. Good Back morning. at the beginning of the summer in June, there was great optimism that perhaps we were through the pandemic or at least on our way there. Many people were being vaccinated. The president's approval rating was up at 56 percent in a Gallup poll. As we sit here this morning, he's down to 43 um, percent, very low even historically for a president at this point, higher than Donald Trump's, but lower than almost all the others. When you all talk inside, how do you assess that? What happened? Why did he drop so precipitously? Is it because COVID seems to have reared its head again? We think that's a big factor. It's impacting millions of Americans across the country, as you know. And people were mentally ready to be through the pandemic a couple of months ago. And a lot of data showed that we were. The Delta variant was about 1% at that point in time of cases across the country. Now we know how transmissible it is. It's the far and away, 90, more than 90, not about 99% of cases in the country. That's obviously had an impact. We've also seen that while there's been a rise in people getting vaccinated, which were very encouraged by over the last month, mm -hmm. there's still a percentage of the population that is not. That's the way that we get through this. People are tired. They're exhausted. They want to go back to normal life. We recognize that. That's one of the reasons, Willie, that the president took such bold steps a couple of weeks ago in putting in place requirements and mandates for businesses over a certain size. And But that's really how we feel uh, we're going to help the country heal and get through this period of time. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, thank you so thank much. You. It's great to see you, you in too. person. Thank you for thank coming you. on. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.